Hey all and welcome to the Casio Watches YouTube channel. We'll get straight into the showcase video today and the watch that I'm featuring is the absolutely awesome GW 7900ER and as you can see here this is a really solid chunky watch. Now I picked this up a couple of weeks ago from eBay, eBay UK. Cost me £35 and it's in absolutely perfect condition. I think one thing that helped me um, when purchasing this watch for what I think is quite a low price was the fact that it wasn't quite listed um, perfectly from the seller's point of view. Uh, they just got it down as a G7900. There was the opening bid of £35 which I put on there. Uh, I think that was including postage as well. Nobody else bid on it. So I picked up this watch. Absolute beast as well. One of the biggest watches I own from the Casio range anyway. Um, those of you that own the 7900 Rescue series, this watch, very similar in looks, similar in size, but there's a couple of real key features that are that make this watch different to the Rescue series, and that is the fact that it has Tough Solar and Multiband 6, which I'll talk a little bit more about later on. Now, I'm just going to get the watch off the watch stand, because they're always on these, I keep them in a watch box on those watch stands. But the first thing I just want to point out is on any of the G-Shock Solar watches, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this video, I'm going to have to pull the band down slightly. And you're looking around this region here, right at the bottom, I don't think you can make it out, just about there, some faint numbers, there we go. Those numbers there, they actually allow you to date the watch with accuracy. And if you go on to my Facebook group, Casio Watchers, I included a picture on there about dating the solar watches. Uh, I took that from a fellow YouTubers uh, clips. If you go on to the Casio Watchers Facebook group and join there, he's credited for sharing this picture. And as I said, it allows you to date the watch with real accuracy. And it turns out that this particular watch was manufactured on Tuesday the 13th of September. 2016 so for a watch that's several years old now to get it for the price I paid in such brilliant condition I'm really pleased about so as I mentioned one of the things that separates this from the regular 7900 rescue series is the fact that it has the tough solar and the multiband 6 now I actually own three G-Shocks now that have tough solar and multiband 6 really really like these features on the watches so it was it was something that attracted me to buy this watch so first of all for those that aren't too familiar with it tough solar it's a solar powered watch so just underneath the face here and around the edge you can see where it's black if i angle it a little bit you might be able to see those are solar cells so the watch takes charge and it means that you never have to replace the battery and um, if the watch does sort of run out of solar charge it can it can keep itself powered i believe it's something like 10 months without any of the charge taken into the um into the cells but it can obviously we i'm in england this time of the year in december there's not much sun about you can see that down here we have the indicator for the solar powered charge low medium and high all three of my solar watches at the moment are on the medium setting because, again, we're not getting much sunlight at the moment. I'm not using any sort of light or lamp to add charge into it, so it's just running on medium at the moment, but that makes no real difference. So this watch here has the Tough Solar, and as always with Casios and G-Shocks, you can see that it's noted on the face there in the red text, Tough Solar. It's also got Multiband 6, and what multiband 6 does is every night when the phone when the the phone when the watch is left on the side when you when you're asleep it will connect to one of the atomic clock um signals so in this country there's one in london i believe i think there might, it might be even be two in london anyway there's one in london it connects to that and it will automatically receive the exact time every night and if i click the button here just press start stop which is also for telling me whether it's received its signal. It tells me that at two minutes past one this morning, 
and it's also shown the date there when this happened, it received the signal. So every night, this watch updates a time to the exact second through the atomic clock. And wherever there's atomic clock support, whichever country, it will sync uh, to that atomic clock. You can also get before the multiband 6, so with the multiband 5 watches, you might see that on some of the, on some of the watches. You might even have one with multiband 5. I believe the only difference there is multiband 5 watches. There's one particular tower, I think it's in China, that it couldn't connect to. But it's got here multiband 6. So every night this watch updates itself with the atomic clock and is absolutely precise and I really like that feature. Next thing I want to talk about on this little showcase video is a couple of other additional features to the basic features of this watch. First of all, you can see, where has it gone on here now? It just says here, P save and then there's a little bar above it. That's a power save feature. So when you take the watch off at night, leave it on your bedside table, it's dark, it's not being messed with, the, the, the actual battery, the solar cell in the watch will shut itself down so the watch screen will be blank. So it will save and preserve that battery all through the night. And then the next morning when you wake up, turn the lights on or pick the watch up and start moving it around a bit, then the, the watch will come back on. And obviously if you've got it connected to set up against the atomic clock, it'll still do that even when it's on power save mode. And the next morning you've got your exact time and you haven't wasted any battery. So I really like that feature, the power save. There's another feature of this watch, and if you hold the light button, which on this particular watch, you press the G, just there. Let me try and do it. Oh, it's, it's done what I was gonna say. So you press the button to, to light it up. If you press it and hold it, you actually put the auto illumination on. So I'll try and do that on here. If you tilt the watch forward, can you see that when you've got it on your wrist and you tilt the watch forward, it will illuminate automatically, which is a nice feature. Some people don't like to have that on because it does use some of that battery power, but I like to have that on there. So if I'm doing something or it's in the dark, I can flip my wrist and it will switch itself into illumination mode. Also, I really like the seconds that are being counted down around that circle on the face there. Nice feature. Two other additional features that I don't really use there. For me personally, they're a bit of a gimmick, but they're pretty cool to look at. The first one is this watch has the moon phase. And if I angle the phone, you might just be able to see it. We're looking at this circle here. So the moon phase, what that does is it tells you, based on where you've got the watch set up to, so again, I've got mine set up to the London time zone, it'll tell you the moon phase. And the, the black bars of the... Um, LCD they fill in the parts and then they leave the white part of the moon so full moon or as you can see at the moment if I angle it right it's hard to show it on the camera it's just got a little bit of white crescent around there for a crescent moon and then flashing in the middle here is a tide phase indicator so if you're into surfing then that will help you out I'm about two hours or so from the nearest ocean so I don't go surfing don't really need this but again it's a cool feature and then on to the basic features of the watch if we go through and cycle through the modes we've got here let's get a bit closer so you've got tide which you can set you've got the world time setting so again i've got it set to madrid for when i go uh, on holiday in the future we've got the alarm you can set multiple alarms we've got the stopwatch and we've got the countdown timer and again, something I really like about G-Shocks, you cycle through them, you hear that slightly different uh, ting from the the um, the sound as you go through and get back to the the clock mode. So as you can see, really really sturdy buttons. Okay, they press really well. The stopwatch buttons, slightly different texture on it, so you can feel that difference. Your finger's not going to slip off these. Really nice. Uh, it's got these full screws, I suppose you could call them, on the face. Really sturdy watch. If you drop it, bash something against it, the face is going to be protected by this really heavy duty bezel around there. The buttons are pretty much protected. It's hard to press them by accident. One thing that this watch has got, which is a little bit different to my other G-Shocks, it's got these sort of wrist protectors, these wrist bumpers on it. And if I just quickly take off my 5610 here, put that at the side, actually if I put them together look, 
you can see. Okay, you can see it's a chunky watch. 5610 isn't a huge G-Shock, quite slim in comparison to this. Okay, so there's the 5610, move that back out of the way. So this G-Shock, it's got these wrist bumpers on it, these wrist protectors, well, I'm not sure what the official name is for them. You can take them off, and I did try wearing this watch without them, but it looks a bit odd when you unscrew these screws here and take the, wind, the wrist protectors off. So put them back on. Got really sturdy, heavy duty strap, as you can see here. So if I pop it on my wrist, now I've got a wrist that's around about six and three quarter inches. So it's quite a slim wrist that I've got. If I put it on quite tight, you can see what it looks like on my wrist. Okay, really nice fit. Now, one thing I will say is sometimes when I wear this watch, the wrist protectors, those wrist bumpers, they do make my wrist a little bit uncomfortable. I think the longer I wear it, the more uncomfortable they get. So you can see, fits well on my wrist. It's difficult to get a shirt or a jumper over it, so it'll be something I'll wear more in the summer. Yeah, I'll just take it back off again because it's hard to angle it against the camera when it's on my wrist. So, there we go, put it back over here. Just trying to think if there's anything else I want to go through about this. We've gone through all the basic features. I'm going to do a video in the future where I compare this GW7900 to my 5610. I've also recently picked up an absolutely awesome G-Shock that I didn't think I'd end up owning at any point uh, in, the, in the coming years, but I, I managed to find it again on eBay, another UK seller. And it's the G-Shock uh, 5510. So at some point I'll do some comparison videos between these two. Comparison between this and the 5510. And then at some point a comparison of all three. At the moment, this one is still the watch I wear the most. This 5610. But this one, when you've got it on your wrist, it really stands out as most G-Shocks do. Really sturdy piece. Quite eye-catching. And... If you can find one for the price I paid, £35, in this condition, I think that's absolutely brilliant. There we go. So, just to end the video, can I just remind you, if you haven't done so already, over on Facebook, the Casio Watchers Facebook group, we're closing in on 100 members. We've been going for around about a month now. People sharing pictures of their collections, what they're wearing on their wrists that day, discussion points. It's really going well, so if you use Facebook and you're into Casios, then check out Casio Watchers. And I'll include a link in the video description, and there's also one in the YouTube channel description as well. So, once again, thanks for watching. Here's the GW7900ER with Tough Solar and the Multiband 6 Atomic Clock Connection. And I will see you all next time.